Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will define a base of a root system and uh, prove its existence. So, later uh, we will see that uh, if we take the set of all bases uh, on this set, uh, the while group naturally acts uh, semi simply and uh, transitively. So, let us first uh, see some examples, uh, later we will actually uh, see the definition of base. Uh, for example, let us uh, recall what is the root system B2. So, if you recall the root system B2, so this is uh, going to be uh, the set of all. Uh, so, if we fix this alpha beta such that uh, beta of uh, alpha, so if we fix this uh, beta alpha, this kata number to be minus 3. So, this is the kata number, sorry, this is uh, we fix it to be minus 2. So, that means the absolute value of this uh, kata number beta alpha, this is max actually that is exactly 2 in this uh, root system B2. So, that is how we are choosing this alpha beta. So, then we saw that uh, this root system B2, uh, it is going to consisting of the following roots plus or minus alpha, plus or minus beta, plus or minus alpha plus beta and then plus or minus beta plus 2 alpha. So, in particularly these roots alpha and beta, so they are some special roots inside B2 and then they actually uh, kind of divides this B2 into two sets. So, one is B2 plus which is consisting of alpha, beta, alpha plus beta and alpha beta plus 2 alpha. Okay. So, this is somewhat gives uh, the roots that are like uh, behaves like positive roots with respect to uh, this alpha beta. So, what I mean by positive roots, uh, so they are uh, non-negative integral linear combination of this alpha beta. Okay. So, this is actually subset of Z plus pan of this alpha beta where Z plus actually all the non-negative integers. Okay. So, in particularly this B2 becomes disjoint union of this B2 plus and then minus B2 plus. Okay. So, this actually tells us that we have some special subset of this B2 and all the elements of this B2 are either non-negative integral linear combination of these elements alpha beta or non-positive integral linear combination of these elements of beta. So, such a subset we call it as base. Okay. So, this is in some sense the definition of base. So, this is uh, actually very clear uh, that uh, all this rank 2 root systems they have bases. So, I will uh, encourage you to identify base for other root systems uh, which is A2 and G2 and so on. Okay. So, now so, we are ready to define what is base. Okay. So, so this is actually motivated from the earlier example that is what we have seen uh, B2. So, we fix a root system, let us call it phi. So, this is a root system. So, this is uh, let us say sitting inside uh, this Euclidean space E. So, then uh, you want to call a subset, a subset let us call it pi. So, this is a subset of phi. So, it is called a base if the following conditions satisfied. So, what are all the condition? The very first condition we call it uh, the base 1 condition. So, this pi must be a basis of this E. So, this is a basis of capital E. In particular, all the elements of this uh, uh, roots phi that must be written as some linear combination of elements from pi. But uh, you can see that we have some very strong condition than just being linear combination. So, that is what we demand it as uh, condition 2. So, if we take any root, so each root beta of phi, so that can be written as either non-negative integral linear combination of elements from phi or non-positive integral linear combination of elements from phi. So, each root beta, 
So, we should have beta either is inside z plus span of pi or beta is in minus z plus span of pi. Okay. So, what is the meaning of that in terms of let us write it in terms of coefficient. So, beta can be written as summation let us say k alpha alpha coming from this pi. So, now what we should have so this is guaranteed from b 1. So, b 1 tells that each element of this beta each element beta of phi that must be written as some linear combination of elements from pi. So, what uh, the condition b 2 demands so b 2 gives that either this k alphas they are all non negative integers for all alpha in pi or this k alphas are all non positive integers for all alpha in pi. So, this is the condition that we get. So, this is some very strong condition on the coefficients, but uh, we can see that using this uh, uh, this rank 2 root systems. So, base exists exists for all rank 2 root system okay, by, by giving this explicit description of uh, rank 2 root system. So, this is something uh, we will prove it for uh, general root system. So, that is our main theorem in this lecture. Uh, for that purpose uh, we need to actually develop some language, but before that let us actually use uh, uh, this base and then define some uh, important terminologies. So, what is that? So, let us say once you have a basis okay, once you have base uh, this base uh, let us say which is subset of pi okay, this is base. So, then all these elements of pi so they are called simple roots. So, elements of pi they are called what is called simple roots. So, that means all other roots are built from this simple roots okay, because all other root from condition B 2 you can see that either it is non negative integral linear combination of simple roots or non positive linear combination of simple roots. Of course, elements of phi are called roots. Okay. So, that is what suggests this simple roots definition. So, now uh, you can also define what is called positive roots and negative roots with respect to all these coefficients being either non negative or non positive okay, that is also well motivated. So, what is this positive roots? So, positive roots so that is by definition. So, you take beta inside phi and then write beta equal to summation k alpha alpha where alpha coming from pi. So, you call beta is positive is said to be positive root or in symbolic positive root if all this k alphas they are all non negative integers for all alpha in pi. Okay. So, similarly one can define negative roots. So, for negative roots so you take this k alpha being okay. so respectively so here being negative you take k alphas are all non positive integers for all alpha in pi. So, this is how you can define negative roots and positive roots. So, then by condition B 2. So, what we get? So, we can define this beta plus or minus. So, this is being the set of all either positive or negative roots. So, this is the set of all positive respectively the negative roots. So, then from B 2 it is clear that capital phi can be written as disjoint union of capital phi plus and phi minus and phi plus is actually just negative of phi minus or phi minus is just negative of phi plus. Okay. So, these things are immediate. So, now we also use uh, the symbolic notation uh, to denote positive roots. So, basically we are going to define a partial order on capital E. So, that actually is kind of uh, suggests this uh, symbolic notation. So, what we want to do? We want to define this uh, partial order which we call it uh, greater than or equal to. So, this is uh, partial order 
that we want to define on capital E using the base pi. So, how one defines this? So, you say that uh, lambda is mu the both are let us say elements of E for then lambda is bigger than mu if and only if if you subtract uh, mu from lambda. So, then this must be a sum of positive roots. So, that is how you define uh, this lambda greater than mu. So, this is is a sum of positive roots. So, from earlier observation you can see that this is if and only if lambda minus mu is inside uh, this uh, z plus pan of this capital pi. So, that is how you define this partial order. Okay, so, I will leave it to you to check this is actually a partial order. So, then in from this definition you can see that your root is positive, your root is positive. So, let us say a root beta is positive if one only if this beta is greater than 0. Okay. So, so this partial order it is in a way suggests that how to define this positive roots and negative roots. So, now uh, we will make one simple observation about the elements of uh, uh, this base and then we will actually move, move ahead and then prove existence of base. So, uh, right now like from this definition it is not very clear whether base exists or not. So, since we know that the, the span of phi is capital E, so some basis of capital E is sitting inside phi that much only we know, but there is no guarantee that uh, we have a base because base consisting of this uh, second axiom. So, that axiom demands that you can actually write any root beta in phi as uh, beta as either non-negative inter linear combination of uh, this uh, elements of pi or non-positive integral linear combination of elements of pi. So, this is very very strong condition. Okay. So, that condition actually somewhat uh, very demanding. So, so we need to actually kind of check this second condition if we want to prove existence of base. Okay, so let us see uh, what we get uh, if we have base. Uh, let us start with the base. So, let us say pi being a base. So, then uh, we can actually uh, observe that if we take two elements inside the base let us say alpha beta. So, they are elements inside base such that beta is not equal to alpha. So, both are these elements. So, in this case we can claim that this beta minus alpha is never a root. So, beta minus alpha is never a root. So, that means alpha minus beta is also a never root by symmetric. Okay. So, how one proves this? So, for this purpose we need to understand uh, what happens if we take the inner product between alpha beta. Okay, let us let us assume that inner product alpha beta is actually positive. So, then uh, since alpha is not equal to part beta. So, if alpha is uh, alpha beta is positive uh, since alpha not equal to beta and pi is a basis. So, that implies uh, this uh, beta is not equal to plus or minus alpha. So, this is something we already have. So, then using this uh, earlier lemma that we proved. So, whenever you have the inner product is positive then that immediately implies that this alpha minus beta or beta minus alpha that is a root. So, then using our earlier result we can see that this beta minus alpha is a root. But then immediately you can see that uh, this beta minus alpha this has mixed sign coefficients. Okay. This is a root let us let us call it gamma. So, this gamma is written as linear combination of elements from pi, but uh, whatever the coefficient that linear combination that we are getting that must be unique expression, but this has mixed sign plus and minus okay. that is not the case. So, this violates B 2. So, this violates B 2. 
so that means we cannot have the inner product positive so that immediately implies the inner product beta alpha must be non positive and that also immediately implies that this beta minus alpha is not a root okay and beta minus alpha is not a so what this says this puts lots of geometric constraint on the elements of the base okay if we take uh, something is a base uh, then all the elements of this base uh, must be the angle between them must be obtuse that is what it says okay. So now uh, let us develop something and then uh, try to prove the existence of base. So for that purpose we need to understand what happens if we take geometrically the union of all the hyperplanes that are perpendicular to that are defined by elements of this phi. Okay. So, recall, so we have this root system phi, okay. so this is a root system and root system by definition this is a finite subset of capital E, okay. this is finite. So, once we define this root system there are some important uh, objects that are associated with this root system. So, for example, given alpha, so we have this uh, hyperplane which we called it p alpha so that is perpendicular to alpha so what is this p alpha this is those x in e that is perpendicular to alpha so this is the hyperplane so that means the dimension of this hyperplane is just one less than the dimension of e so this is the hyperplane and we also have a reflection s alpha in w so this is just defined from e to e so that reflects the uh, this is uh, yeah this is just a reflection with respect to the hyperplane p alpha so more uh, algebraically so this is given by s alpha of lambda equal to lambda minus twice lambda alpha divided by alpha 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 so this is how it's defined for all lambda inside your capital okay so now let's look at these hyperplanes which are actually uh, perpendicular to these roots alpha. So then uh, you can see that uh, these hyperplanes, so how many are there? There are only finitely many hyperplanes are there. So if you take this p alpha, alpha coming from this phi. So note that uh, up to this uh, modulo this plus or minus, so we can take uh, uh, this modulo plus or minus because p alpha will be same as p minus alpha. So anyway you take this union of this p alpha you can see that this is a closed subset of capital E okay and this is just a just union of hyperplanes. So these hyperplanes okay so now this cannot cover entire E because for example one can immediately give measure theory proof uh, if you take a measure uh, that is defined on this Euclidean space which has dimension let us say L okay, let us say dimension of E equal to L. So then E is naturally isomorphic to R power L. So if you take a, that uh, standard measure on capital E, then you can see that the measure of this union of this P alpha that will be 0 because each hyperplane will have measure 0 and this uh, union of finitely many hyperplanes will have definitely measure 0. So that proves that the complement of uh, this uh, hyperplanes okay union of hyperplanes that must be non empty so you take this e minus union of p alpha alpha in phi so this is a non empty subset of e not only that this is naturally a open set so this is a open subset of e as uh, union of p alpha is a closed set so if you think about it since we have removed only the finitely many hyperplanes so you can easily see that this is indeed actually a, a finite union of connected subsets of capital E so this can be written as uh, so because so every time you actually remove one hyperplane then what happens so that divides E into two parts okay let us say you are inside uh, this R2. So if you take uh, this plane that is the 
line passing through origin. So, if you just remove this line, so then you get two distinct components of the complement. Okay. So, now if you remove hyperplanes that corresponds to this phi, then by induction you can see that so there are exactly uh, the cardinality of phi number of connected components are there for this E difference union P alpha alpha and phi. So, there are there are cardinality of phi number of connected components of this E difference union P alpha alpha and phi. So, this is something you can just use induction and prove. So, use induction and check this. Okay, this is something trivial. So, then that proves that uh, this complement of this union P alpha alpha and phi, it is a open set which has this many number of connected components and each connected component will be actually open subset again and that is more than actually open it will be a convex subset. So, that is something I will leave it to you to check. Okay. So, if we take uh, this uh, uh, E difference union of P alpha, so then a connected component of that a connected component of this E difference union P alpha alpha in phi. So, is indeed a convex open subset, a convex open subset of capital E. Again, this is also you can use induction and prove because if you remove one hyperplane, it is easy to see uh, the complement is indeed actually has two components and both are uh, convex open subsets. And then if you keep removing, then you can use induction and then see that uh, the component that we will be keep getting is will be convex and open subsets. And these connected components, they will be called wild chambers. Okay. So, these connected components of so, this is the definition connected components of E difference union P alpha, alpha and P are called the wild chambers. of capital. Of course, we can take this set of wild chambers and then we can see that uh, this wild group will naturally act on that. Okay. Before actually uh, uh, looking at this wild group action, let us make some uh, uh, remarks about this wild chambers. So, the elements of this uh, uh, E difference union P alpha that will be called regular elements. Okay an element of E is called regular, is called regular if this gamma, let us say an element gamma of E is called regular this gamma lies inside this E difference union P alpha alpha in phi. Otherwise, it will be called singular. Okay. Otherwise, it is called singular. So, that means it is orthogonal to some alpha for alpha in phi. Okay. So, this is again a definition. So, if we take a regular element, then the regular element will lie inside some connected component. That means, it will lie inside one wild chamber. Okay. So, that actually kind of uniquely uh, picks up that wild chamber. So, given uh, regular element, okay. so given gamma inside E which is regular, 
you can see that this gamma lies inside one uh, connected component of E difference union P alpha alpha and phi. So, so this is defined inside in unique connected component of E difference union P alpha alpha and phi and that unique connected component we denoted by C comma. So, this is that wild chamber ok the wild chamber. So, that contains this comma. So, that is what we denoted by C gamma. So, now uh, what we can see so if we take uh, this gamma that is regular ok and then you take some other gamma dash. So, that is also regular ok. So, late so here is the observation gamma gamma dash both are in E. So, both are let us say regular elements ok. So, then assume that both of them lie on the same side of each hyperplane P alpha alpha and phi ok. So, assume that gamma gamma dash so they lay lie on the same side of each hyperplane P alpha where alpha in phi. Okay. So, then that means you can see that so this uh, C gamma C gamma dash so that must be same okay, because they all lie inside same side of the hyperplane and then you can construct this uh, subset of phi. So, which is uh, defined using uh, this gamma ok. So, maybe let let me just tell me about that let, let me just tell about that. Uh, so, you have this gamma gamma dash so that is lying on the one side of the like uh, hyperplane. So, then this implies immediately that C gamma is same as C gamma dash ok. So, this is the immediate opposition, but before that let us let us actually like uh, see what one can do with this regular element ok. So, let us uh, start with a regular element let us say gamma in E which is regular. So, then naturally gamma is not lying inside this union of P alpha alpha and phi. So, that implies gamma alpha the inner product. So, that is going to be non-zero for all alpha in phi. So, now note that uh, if gamma alpha is positive ok. So, then if and only if gamma of minus alpha will be negative ok. So, this is just simple observation. So, this is something motivates us to define what is called this phi plus of gamma. What is phi plus of gamma? So, this is those betas inside phi such that beta alpha is actually positive ok. So, beta alpha is positive. So, in some sense we will prove so this will actually play a role of what is called this set of positive roots ok. So, in particularly we will be able to find a base inside inside this uh, phi plus of gamma. So, what this is actually this is actually those roots. So, sorry those roots that lie on the one side of this hyperplane uh, P gamma. So, this given gamma inside E. So, you have this hyperplane B gamma. So, which is those x in E such that which is perpendicular to uh, this gamma. So, pictorially so you have this hyperplane. So, that is actually just uh, somewhere. So, then you can see that you are collecting roots beta. So, that is let us say if this is gamma 0 and then let us say this is gamma positive. So, then you are collecting roots that are lying on the positive side of this hyperplane. And of course, the hyperplane uh, divides capital E ok or the E difference P gamma will be 
two components one is the positive component and one is the negative component and we are collecting roots that are lying in the positive component. So, what is our climb now? So, we can see that uh, this phi plus gamma contains actually a base. So, how do we get that base? So, that uh, to get that base we can actually go back to the definition of base and then see what base demands. So, basically what base demands? Uh, so, base must be a basis and each element of a root, uh, root system must be either non-negative integral linear combination or non-positive integral linear combination. So, so that motivates us to define what is called this indecomposable elements phi plus gamma. Okay, let us call that is delta of gamma or let us call it pi of gamma. Okay, what is pi of gamma? So, pi of gamma is a subset of phi plus of gamma. Okay, what it is? It is just those elements of phi plus gamma that cannot be written as sum of again elements from p plus of gamma. So, that is those beta in phi plus gamma such that beta is what is called indecomposable. Okay. So, for that what we, we need to define what is called decomposable an element an element beta of phi plus gamma is said to be decomposable if beta can be written as beta 1 plus beta 2 for some beta 1 beta 2 inside your phi plus of gamma okay if 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 the if a given element cannot be written as sum of two elements from phi plus of gamma then you call that is indecomposable then you collect all this beta inside this phi plus gamma which is indecomposable. Since this phi plus gamma is a subset of phi and phi itself is finite, so that forces that phi plus gamma to be finite. So, then uh, since uh, it is finite set we will have indecomposable elements because using some standard argument you can see uh, it must have indecomposable elements. Okay. So, now you take all this indecomposable elements in phi plus gamma. So, what is our climb? So, this will be a base. Okay. This is our climb. This pi of gamma is indeed a base of phi. So, for that purpose we need to actually prove two things. One is uh, this pi of gamma must be a basis and second thing is each element of phi can be written as either non-negative linear combination or integral linear combination of elements from pi of gamma or non-positive integral linear combination of elements of pi of gamma. So, we will prove uh, both of them in one go. So, how one can prove this? Let us see. So, first of all you can see that each root in phi plus of gamma must be non-negative uh, eject linear actually non-negative integral linear combination of elements of pi of gamma. So, why that is true? So, this is here is the climb, this is the first climb, each root inside this phi plus of gamma is a non-negative integral linear combination of this pi, pi of gamma. So, why this is true? So, one can induct on this uh, uh, gamma comma alpha. So, let us start with alpha in phi plus of gamma. If of course, alpha is in pi of gamma then we are done. So, assume that alpha is not in pi of gamma. So, then alpha is indecom not indecomposable. So, that means alpha is decomposable. Okay. So, you can write alpha as some beta 1 plus beta 2 where beta 1 beta 2 both come from this phi plus of gamma. So, now note that if you take the inner product gamma alpha, so then that must be equal to gamma beta 1 plus gamma beta 2. Since gamma alpha, gamma beta 1, gamma beta 2 all of them are positive, then that implies gamma of beta 1 is smaller than gamma of alpha 
and gamma of beta 2 again smaller than gamma alpha. So, now by induction okay in some sense you can call this is a height okay the height is just gamma alpha it may not be some integer or anything but it is some quantity that measures something related to al alpha okay that quantity is actually kind of goes down for beta 1 and beta 2 so then that says using induction uh, you can see that beta 1 and beta 2 can be written as so using induction both beta 1 beta 1 beta 2 can be written as non negative integral linear combination of elements of pi of gamma and that implies immediately that beta 1 beta 2 e also can be written which is alpha. So, this proves that uh, any element of alpha can be written as non negative jet linear combination of elements of pi of gamma. So, now note that it is easy to see pi is actually equal to pi plus of gamma disjoint union minus pi plus of gamma. So, that is because if gamma alpha is positive if and only if gamma of minus alpha is negative. So, using this you can see that any element of pi can be written as either ejet non negative ejet linear combination of elements of pi of gamma or non negative uh, non positive ejet linear combination of elements of gamma. So, that proves B 2 is satisfied. So, B 2 is satisfied. So, we need to check the B 1 that is uh, the elements of pi of gamma that must be linearly independent. So, let us check that. So, why elements of pi of gamma is linearly independent? So, that is because one can check it is uh, geometrically constrained. Okay. Here is the second climb. So, if we take alpha beta, so that is coming from pi of gamma, then one can immediately prove that uh, this the inner product alpha beta that must be non positive unless alpha equal to beta. Okay. So, how one proves this? So, suppose if this is not true, okay, if this is not true then what will happen then alpha beta must be positive. So, then that implies using that uh, lemma that we proved in the earlier class then we can immediately conclude that beta minus alpha must be a root. So, this is must be a root. So, if this is a root then either beta minus alpha will be inside phi plus of gamma or alpha minus beta will be in phi plus gamma. So, this implies that either alpha minus beta is in phi plus of gamma or beta minus alpha is in phi plus of gamma. But in both cases we will get contradiction as follows. Suppose alpha minus beta is in phi plus of gamma then you can see that you can write alpha equal to beta plus alpha minus beta. So, that means you could write alpha as combination of two elements that are coming from phi plus of gamma. So, that forces that alpha is not de it is not indecomposable it is not indecomposable. So, which is a contradiction because it must be indecomposable by definition of pi of gamma. So, similarly if beta minus alpha is in phi plus of gamma you can see that beta will be written as alpha plus beta minus alpha again it contradicts in decomposability of beta. So, in both cases we get contradiction. So, that proves that the inner product beta alpha must be always non positive for all alpha beta which is in pi of gamma such that beta not equal to alpha. So, this geometric constraint in a way actually guarantees that uh, this uh, pi of gamma must be linearly independent. So, pi of gamma is linearly independent. So, how one proves this? You can see that first of all all elements of pi of gamma that lies on the one side of the hyperplane gamma and uh, in the inner product between any two distinct elements of pi of gamma that is non-positive. 
So, these two conditions actually somewhat forces pi of gamma to be linearly independent. So, let us say how one can prove this. Let us assume on the contrary they we have a linear relation. Let us say summation r alpha alpha is 0 okay, where alpha coming from this pi of gamma where r alpha is coming from this r. So, now you can see that uh, by separating positive and negative term we can just uh, write it as uh, epsilon equal to summation some r alpha alpha where r where some runs over all alpha inside pi of gamma such that r alpha positive and then similarly which is same as equal to r beta beta where beta runs over over all pi of gamma such that beta is sorry r beta is negative okay or minus r beta so note that if uh, uh, this summation r alpha alpha is 0 then we can substract uh, we can uh, uh, divide uh, this coefficients r alpha to be positive or negative then you can write this epsilon to be this so now look at this epsilon so then what happens if you compute uh, the inner product epsilon epsilon so this must be greater than or equal to 0 as epsilon being element of capital e so now since beta alpha is always non positive for all beta not equal to alpha that comes from pi of gamma you can see that this is going to be equal to summation this term comma this term so that actually forces that this is exactly equal to summation r alpha minus r beta alpha beta where now alpha beta they are coming from two different disjoint sets so that means this is going to be at most uh, yeah at most zero so that forces that this is less than or equal to zero so that forces that this epsilon epsilon to be zero so that means epsilon must be zero so, we proved that this summation r alpha alpha where r alpha positive must be 0 as well as summation minus r beta beta where r beta less than 0 is also 0. So, now since both these sums are running over elements of pi of gamma and pi of gamma is actually sits one side of the hyperplane. So, what is the property of pi of gamma? pi of gamma is subset of this phi plus of gamma. What is phi plus of gamma? This is those beta in phi such that beta gamma is positive. So, that tells you that if we take this element epsilon then epsilon comma gamma. So, which is going to be summation r alpha alpha gamma. So, this is going to be 0 on the one hand, but this alpha gamma these are all positive. Okay, These are all positive. So, and this r alpha these are all uh, non-negative or positive okay this is running over r alpha positive. So, that gives you contradiction because we are summing over positive terms such a way that we are getting 0 okay. Uh, but that is cannot happen unless this sum is empty unless this sum is empty. So, that forces that there is no r alpha such that r alpha positive. Similarly, you can conclude there is no r beta such that r beta is negative. So, that means uh, the assumption that we have made summation r alpha alpha is being 0 is actually not true. Okay. So, that proves that this pi of gamma must be linearly independent. So, this must be linearly independent. So, that way we actually proved that pi of gamma is indeed a base is indeed a base of pi okay so indeed we will actually prove that this is the only way to get all the base all the bases okay so let me just quickly recall what we did and then i will stop there so, what we did we defined what is called regular elements. So, what is regular element? Regular element is an element that is lying inside the complement of all these p alphas. Take gamma, gamma is actually lying inside E minus union p alpha alpha in phi. So, then this gamma allows us to divide phi into 
two sets so those roots that are lying on the positive side of gamma p gamma are on the negative side of p gamma so that allows us to define what is called this phi plus of gamma this is those beta in phi such that beta of alpha is positive so then it's clear that phi can be written as phi plus of gamma disjoint union phi minus phi plus of gamma so now then what we did we actually looked at some indecomposable elements in phi plus of gamma that we denoted by pi of gamma pi of gamma those elements of phi plus of gamma such that beta is indecomposable so that mean it cannot be written as sum of elements from phi plus of gamma so then we proved that this must be a base must be a base inside your phi so this is what we prove okay so we will prove in the next class that all base bases should come this way okay i will stop here and i will continue tomorrow thank you